snake that can eat a man. I don't want to get involved with that part of it. Look at him, he's really mad now. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know if you want him to get to... Oh, oh, uh, that's exactly what I don't want to happen. You don't want a snake like this getting around you, especially around your neck. Come on. Oh, Ever since I can remember, I've been interested in dangerous and exotic wildlife. But for the past 10 years or so, I've earned my living from photography. Traveling from my home in Southern Africa to the ends of the earth to photograph some of the rarest and deadliest creatures in the world. Look what I got, a banded sea crate. That's an incredible snake, it's the most unusual snake. Not only are these snakes completely at home on land, they're just as at home in water. And if you look at his tail, you can see quite clearly he's got a specially flattened tail, which makes it very possible for him to swim at great speeds and at great depths. Very good swimmers, very agile under the water. These are highly venomous snakes. In fact, they're one of the most venomous snakes in the world, but few people ever come into contact with them. So we have very few bites ever recorded. Of course, they're venomous for one purpose only, to catch their food prey, which is usually fish or eels. And venom is very toxic to those animals. But of course, obviously dangerous to humans as well. Isn't that a gorgeous snake? Just look at that. Oh, fantastic, man. It's such a pity that people are actually so nervous of snakes. Snakes fear people as much as people fear snakes, and mostly the snake is actually trying to get away. There are one or two exceptions, though. There are a few snakes in the world that actually grow so large that they can actually constrict and swallow human beings. These giant snakes know no fear and could quite easily swallow a human being with no effort at all. So I'm going to catch one of these giant snakes. The best place I can possibly go is Borneo. It's incredible to think that in the 21st century, there are still places on the planet that remain unexplored. I'm heading for one of the wildest and most remote areas of Borneo in search of the reticulated python, a giant among snakes. Cleverly camouflaged with a reticulated or net-like pattern of scales, this is the ultimate predator. I've tracked down and photographed hundreds of snakes, many of which could have killed me but it's very unusual to come face to face with a snake that could actually swallow me whole. The reticulated python is unique. It's the longest and most powerful snake in the world. I suspected that the first stage of my journey was going to be the easy part. The Portuguese, the Dutch and finally the British tried to tame Borneo. The British even built a railway, but they found the land too wild and difficult to cross and they didn't get far.
first explorers returned from Borneo with tales of wild tribes, headhunters, dragons, and giant snakes. I wondered how much of this was still true today. I was heading deep into the heart of Borneo, the largest island in the South China Sea. And where I was heading, there were no maps. Until Westerners arrived in the 19th century, the dense jungles of Borneo were inhabited by tribes who lived in isolated communities and had little contact with the outside world. The traditional dwelling is the longhouse, home to many generations of the same family. Built on stilts, away from the evil spirits that are thought to live in the ground, the raised longhouses also offered protection from animals and hostile tribesmen. Headhunting was once popular. The gruesome trophies were a sign of strength. The more heads displayed in a longhouse, the more it would be feared by the enemy. All right. How much? Uh, 20 ringgit. Yeah, good. Snake man. Yeah, snake man. Eh? Oh, <laughs> you recognize snake. that, eh? Yeah. yeah. I wanted to catch a ride on one of the trucks heading out of the village. I just hope the driver's headhunting days are over. Of all the islands in the South China Sea, Borneo has the richest variety of snakes. There are more than 150 different species. But of all the different species, the one that is feared the most, the one that I have come in search of, is the reticulated python. These giant snakes are thought to reach lengths of 30 feet or more and are known to have killed and consumed human beings. I finally got my ride, but like everything in Borneo, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. The men on the ferry knew all about the reticulated python. Not so long ago, a 14-year-old boy had been eaten by one. People in Borneo have learned to live with snakes, and as I left the river, I was to have a chance encounter. Ah, it's a little cobra, a little spitting cobra. They have this ability to spray venom, which is a lot more dangerous and it's a defense mechanism. My tongs are vital in situations like this, allowing me to handle dangerous snakes securely but gently. He's actually quite young, so I could imagine he could actually spit about two meters, but it comes out in a spray. It covers your whole body. It's a neurotoxic venom they have, nerve-destroying venom. It's very powerful, one drop into your bloodstream is enough to actually kill a human being. But as I say, spitting in the eyes, self-defense, okay, that could blind you and that would be a problem. But he's such a tiny little guy, but he's so brave, isn't that incredible? I mean, he's still very nervous, he bounces around all the time. Yeah, yeah. The snakes have got no ears. They don't hear airborne sounds, they've got internal ears, they can pick up vibrations, so he's very nervous. The eyesight's not even that good, so the slightest movement attracts his attention. Luckily, I was wearing my sunglasses, so my eyes were protected. To be safe, all I had to do was to remember to keep my mouth shut. Unfortunately, this is something that does not come naturally to me. The venom so potent, you would be in trouble. You don't want to get bitten by a cobra ever. Yeah, he's actually well behaved, guys. Just watch him. He doesn't want to waste his venom. He would rather get away if he could. He just warns me all the time. Well, you're so furious. I'm just a teenager, man. I don't know how to handle this kind of stress. All right, I'm gonna let him go. <laughs> okay, let's put him back where he was going. He was heading across the road. We'll just let him go further across the road. Well, I wasn't expecting that. A little bit of good luck, eh? <laughs> It wasn't long before the road ran out. 
Tomorrow I would start the journey up the Kinabatangan River. I had heard that somewhere near the source of this river was where I would find the largest snake. I've had years of experience with snakes, but there are some snakes and some experiences you just cannot prepare for. The reticulated python is infamous throughout the world and it's known to be the largest snake in the world. There's some records claiming about 33 foot. Now, we don't know how accurate that is. And I'm hoping that out here I might get a chance to find something really large and get a good idea of what the snake actually does and what it's about. A 20 foot or 20 plus foot reticulated python is quite capable of swallowing a man with no effort at all. So this is going to be quite a test for myself and hopefully come across a snake and just have a chance to get hold of him. I just wondered, was I pushing my luck a bit too far? My plan was to follow the Kinabatangan River to its source because it was there in one of the most remote parts of Borneo that I'd been told I would find the largest snakes. I was not expecting to have to travel quite so far on foot but if there's one thing I've learned about Borneo it's to expect the unexpected. He could probably push his neck out about six or twelve inches. I'll see if I can get you to look at the size. I've never seen one. They're usually half the size. But now look, as soon as I pull him up and he's nervous now, he tucks his head away. See how he pulls his head back in there? I lower him gently. Wants to get away, puts his head down. You can see how quickly his neck comes out. So man, it's incredible. And because of the size, I have to guess. I mean, turtles get very old. I couldn't even guess how much, but I guess this is a 30, 40, maybe a 50-year-old turtle. You just can't say for sure. But this is a soft shell turtle, it's not a hard shell turtle. The soft shell helps him underwater. In other words, going between rocks, in between reeds, stuff like that. It doesn't easily get hooked as he would if he had a hard shell like, like the land tortoises have. So there, oh, see I went, oh, he wanted to bite me. Have a look at the jaws. It's a very fine line along the edge. You don't get your fingers near that. Those are like two sharpened blades. If you got your finger there, you could take it off. This guy, this size, would take your finger right off. No question about it. He's actually got claws, which are difficult to see unless I can get my hand there, but I'm a bit nervous. Let me try the back one. See the size of these claws? And those claws can really dig. They can dig into the bottom, grab on, and move wherever he wants to go. That's those jaws I'm worried about. I'll bring my boot close to his mouth and see if he pushes it away. Yeah, just go. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Look at that! Look at my boot! It took a piece right out. That gives you an eye. Do you see the hole? He took a piece right out of my boot. Unbelievable. So you see what I'm saying? If you had your finger there or your toe, could you just imagine take it clean off? I mean, this is a thick leather boot. This is my boot. Oh, I should look for trouble with that one. They are extremely powerful creatures and one with a jaw this size, you just don't fool around with it. Okay, so I mustn't get my hand near that. All right, so it was incredible something to find like this come across. I wasn't expecting that walking through the river here. But what I'm going to do is just let him go. He's such an old boy. Deserves his freedom again. So I'm just going to give him a little shove here and let him be on his way. Off you go, boy. You take a swim now. Thank you for that little interlude. Watch him, see if you can see him go. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I could have lost a toe. Almost all snakes feed on live prey, but there are a few exceptions. In Borneo, 
there is one snake that has developed a special appetite. It lives underground and feeds largely on dead bats. There were millions of bats filling the sky, and I knew that if I was going to find one of these rare and unusual snakes, this was my best chance. In Borneo, caves have a special significance. Evil spirits are said to live underground. The Kinabatangan people used to bury their dead in caves. Elaborately carved coffins bore images of crocodiles, lizards and snakes, reflecting ancient legends. Just look at this expanse. This is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. There are stories that in the deepest of caves dwells a female vampire who having lured men to her lair would suck their bodies dry of blood. But right now, my main concern was, would my rope be long enough? I could feel a cold current of air rising from a shaft that led away from the main chamber. The noise and smell of the bats was overpowering. I began to wonder if curiosity had got the better of me. And then, at last, I found what I was looking for. Isn't that gorgeous? They're called racers because they're fast-moving snakes. They move very quick. You find them all over forests everywhere. They're pretty broad spectrum all over the country. But some of these guys have learned a special trick. They've discovered the abundance of food around caves. They have bats, they have all these swallows, these swifts coming in here. They have, of course, frogs and mice, all kinds of stuff living in caves. And so these guys have started frequenting caves. Some of them spend so much time down here that they barely come out. And if I'm looking at this guy, I'm seeing he's actually got a very dark color. And I'm just wondering, because very often these guys are a greeny color. The forest ones are definitely green in color. This guy's got a gray sort of look all over him. I'm just wondering how long he's been down here. He's actually losing some of his color. So they hunt around here, and what is unusual is where snakes normally are looking for live prey. They see the movement of the prey, they strike out, they grab it, and they constrict it, because these guys are semi-constrictors. They'll grab it and eat it. These guys have learned that there's so much dead food around. Sometimes young birds have fallen out of nests, and they find them flying on the floor. And they might even pick them up and eat them, even after a few days of being there. So these are semi-carrion eaters as well, which is quite unusual for snakes. What would be interesting to see is one of these guys eating a bat, because if a bat with its expansive wings 
I know it's a problem. They have to get the head of the bat, start swallowing down, and usually the wings are sticking out. Then they have to work it from one side to the other until eventually they get the whole thing down. That would be quite interesting to see. I've never seen that. But that obviously happens a lot in caves like this. Incredible. Hey, come up to me. Come up to me. That's my boy. Look at that. Isn't he gorgeous? What's this thing? What's this thing? He says, never seen a thing like this before. Hey, but you're so beautiful too. Oh, isn't that? Snakes are so wonderful. He's such a gentle snake. He's just curious about what I am. He's, ah, he's too big to eat, so I won't worry about him. Snakes can, of course, tell how large their prey is. If I was something, as, I mean, I'm a mammal. I, I really should be able, the snake should be able to eat me, but of course he wouldn't try because I am so large. That's the, the first rule about snakes, that people have no reason to fear snakes because mostly people are too big to be eaten. Not like the big python I'm actually searching for. That would be an exception because that snake can actually eat people. All right, I'm going to let this guy go now. He's quite happy here. I've had a good look at him, he's really nice. I'm gonna let him go, because I gotta really start looking for a way to get out of this cave. Following the Kinabatangan River was not as straightforward as I'd expected. With all its twists and turns, I no longer had a clear idea how far I'd come or how far there was still to go. I needed to find out where I was. Away from the river, it's even easier to get lost. One part of the rainforest looks pretty much like the next. But I knew the one sure way to get my bearings. From high up in the canopy, I could see what I was looking for. To the west lay the mountains that held the source of the Kinabatangan. This is where I hoped I would find the ultimate predator, the reticulated python. Take him with me. Ah, I've got him. I've got him. This is a mangrove snake. A mangrove snake. This is a snake I've always wanted to photograph. They're one of the most beautiful snakes and they're really good performers. Hang on, he's got himself hooked there, which is fine. Let him just hold on there. I can just reach for my camera while he's hanging on there. Got my camera. Yeah, I got it. This is a guy I've always wanted to photograph. They take fantastic photographs. I'll try and, try and show you what I mean. If I can just get. He's pulling our right. Hang on, just hang on. Mm. Okay. Got that off. Let me just load this up and get my flash out so that I'm ready for it. Because when these guys get mad, they really go for you. It's a back fang snake. It's not highly, highly venomous, but nobody knows just how bad the venom is. And when they get upset, they puff up the throat and they'll actually lunge at you sometimes. But we're just going to get him a little bit higher. Look at that, look at that head, look at that tongue. Isn't he gorgeous? These are one of the most beautiful snakes in the world as far as I'm concerned. Now let's get him up here in a tree where I can get a good position. They're very prehensile. They live in trees. They love being in trees. They move like mad in a tree. Look at him. Watch him go. He can move his muscles. Look at this. Look how quickly he can move without even, without any effort at all. He's so agile. Watch him go without, without any sign of any movement there. Watch how he goes along. See that? It's incredible how these snakes can move. Look at that. Pattern going through the tree. Come on now. You gotta come back out of here. These guys eat anything. They, they even eat other snakes sometimes, but they, they eat frogs, they eat lizards, they'll take small mice, they're quite happy to take anything that he can get his mouth on. There we go, gonna get a pic this is gonna be a way to get pictures. They're called mangrove snakes because 
They live around mangroves very often and they feed around those areas. They have this incredible bright yellow bands, which probably is a warning that it's dangerous or maybe even just a trick warning. They are false, false venomous snakes as we call them. This guy might put on this big show, puff up his throat, stab out with his open mouth and having these yellow bands on frighten away any other animal might think he's highly venomous or very dangerous. You can imagine he can grab onto a frog, grab onto a mouse, grab onto anything and he can hold on and he just chews. Back fang snakes just hold on and they keep chewing. They don't stop chewing. And while they're chewing like that, the venom salivates down those groove teeth and into the victim. Okay. Let's, ah, oh, oh, now he's getting a little bit upset. Ah, let's, ah, ah, ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And another one. Look at him coming right at me now. Getting that jaw there. These prehensile snakes are so powerful. If he's got a branch that he wants to reach, let's see if we can do it. See the branch? Watch how far he can reach his body out to get to the branch. Look at that. Look at the strength in that neck, how he's reaching for that branch while he's balancing on my hand. Look at that. He wants to go up. His whole body, all those muscles working, keeping him absolutely straight with nothing to hold on to. And he's just got it. Isn't that fantastic? See how he hooks his jaw around? Aren't they fantastic? Snakes are so magic. Get a picture of that like that. Watch. Just hold him there so he doesn't go away. What I did notice while I was working with these guys, he's got a few ticks on him. Snakes are cold-blooded creatures and people don't always realize that they do get stung by mosquitoes and they do get nailed by ticks too. And there's a little tick right there, let's pull him off. And I saw some more yo. See there, there's two big ones together over there. Always pull them off. If ever I find a snake's got ticks on, take them off straight away. I've seen snakes with giant ticks this size on their heads. It causes terrible damage to the snake. Sometimes they can't even feed and they die. Ticks are cursed. Now I've got them both off. Get rid of those two. All right, so that helps him a little bit. What I'll do now is just let him go on his way. I've distracted him enough. To grab a branch. Go on, boy. Take on there. There we go. He'll soon catch on that he's free again and he can move on in his own time. Up you go. Up you go. Give him a little tickle. Finds his way. And starts heading off. What a beautiful snake. What an amazing island this is. It's hard to believe that somewhere that seems so close to paradise is home to one of the only snakes in the world capable of eating a man. a water monitor, a really tough customer. I've got to face him head on. He uses his tail like a bulwark to keep me at bay. But each time I reach for his head, he spins around to try and get me with that tail. Ow! <laughs> the first explorers who came to Borneo described these monitor lizards as fearsome beasts, and with good reason. With powerful claws, a razor-like tail, and teeth designed to tear flesh, these awesome creatures are capable of bringing down prey many times their size. These guys are incredibly powerful predators. He's a top predator around here. I mean, nothing can tackle this guy. He's so strong. He's very clever. Look how he keeps turning. Look, he wises up very quickly. Oh. Oh. Okay, I've got you. Okay, look at these claws. As much as you have got to fear the teeth of it, of a monitor like that, you've got to watch out for his claws. He's got 20 claws like that. Look at that. Those things dig into you, can't get them open either. They claw around, they hold on both sides, pulling on you. They dig those claws in. These guys can run down things as big as a small pig, man. They're incredibly powerful predators. Look at this. Look at the size of him. You see a big boy? Okay, he's a little bit tired, and I'm able to at least just hold him up. I can't show you inside the mouth, because he's been doing that, but he's got teeth like you cannot believe. Okay. Now, these guys are fantastic swimmers as well. They feed out here in the swampy areas, and they eat anything, absolutely anything. You'll take birds, they'll take fish if they see, they'll take carrion even, and they'll run some prey down and actually catch them and swallow them. But they kill everything by just pure power of the jaw, 
crashing down on it and holding on with those claws. So that's what I've been trying to avoid, it's just not getting these claws around me and of course not getting that jaw on me. But I thought it would be interesting just to see what these guys are like. I've seen quite a few of them running around here. Borneo is full of them, but I've never caught one before. Fantastic creature. I'm just going to release him again. He looks tired, dead tired, but appearances can be deceptive. These monitors are one of the few lizards that will play dead. It's amazing to see this behavior from such a big, tough animal. If they find they've been handled or something's happened and he's unsure of his, of his situation, they go into dead storm, storm mode, almost like, a, almost like a shamming dead. So you can actually chuck him around. Isn't that incredible? I wonder if I turned him over what his reaction would be to that. Hey, would you be dead if you're on your back? Look at this. Pretending to be dead. Isn't that incredible? What's the eye? Just the eye gives it away. An animal wouldn't know that, but I know that. You look at the eye and you can see all the life in there and you can see how he's ready to do something. So be very careful. He's starting to pull his strength back. He knows it's not working. So he wants to get up. Now. There we go. He's standing a bit. The strength of these creatures is unbelievable. I was exhausted. It made me realize just what I would be taking on when I finally came face to face with the reticulated python. to move on. I was getting close and I knew it. As the jungle closed in, I knew I was near the source of the Kinabatangan River, said to be the home of the largest snakes. But I was here for one snake in particular, the one snake in Borneo capable of eating a man, the giant reticulated python, and I was hot on its trail. Well, you wouldn't easily see this on camera. Maybe if you come close, maybe you can see. That's definitely a drag mark. I mean, yeah, where the water is, everything's washed away, but if you just look on the edge, you can actually see the lines. Only a big snake can do that. Ah, oh, yeah, look at this. There we are, all the proof I need. Here's a piece of skin. This snake is shedding its skin. From this piece of skin, because if you look, the scales are very small. You can't exactly tell how big that snake is, but look at this piece here. Now that's the bottom scale. That's from under the tummy. On the top, the scales are small and equal. Under the stomach, you have single scales like that passing under the bottom. Got to be a big snake to have a scale that size. Big, big snake, and he's dragged all the way here and gone. There's some more there. There's some more skin left on this root. This root can't budge, so he's been dragging. Oh, now I can see. Look at this. See, if you wet the skin, keep it wet, you can open it up. Look at the pattern. Without any question of doubt, you can see it's a reticulated python. I wasn't sure about that over there. Look at that. Big piece of skin. He's gone off here. He's right on the track. Of quite a big snake, I suspect. You can just feel it, I'm close, because we found so much skin. Look at this. Look at this. And then this snake is right here, it's been shedding. It's, it's been shedding and pushing itself all along this bank here somewhere. It's just incredible. Look, oh, just look here, look here. Look here, right in front of me, I'm not even seeing it, look here. Bring the camera here. Look at this. Look at this. There he is. Look at his whole boy. Look here. Perfectly camouflaged. I mean, you can walk right past him and never see him. He's probably doing this because he's shedding, okay? But usually when these snakes hunt anyway, they could lie in water. Any little animal that comes down to drink, whap, grabs him. So I could be in danger even coming past here. But he, he doesn't actually look like such a big one, but I'm not sure. You obviously have to bring him out to see what he looks like. 
My problem is where's the head? I have no idea where the head is. I've got a piece of body here and I don't want a head lunging out at me at any from any side. And I don't want it grabbing my hand either. Oh god, this guy's bigger than I thought. Oh, look at the side of this. Oh my god. Let's see which side I've got. Oh, okay. There we go. This snake is solid oh. muscle. He's hardly resisting as I pull him out of the water. I still haven't got the head, I've got the tail, which is good. Oh, he's eating something. Look at this. He's got something in here about the size of a monkey or a duck or something. This is a big snake, man. And look at him pull. Oh, this is the problem now. He's even, he's even wet and I can't get a good grip on him. Here we go. I can't see the head. Oh, there's the head. Look at that. Look at his head. You see his head? Oh, man, he's an old snake. He's about 20. This is a 20, 30 year old snake. Look at the scarring on his head from wars. This is one tough critter. If he can survive prey chewing on his head, a few photos aren't going to spoil his day. But he does seem a bit camera shy. Right, here he comes. I wouldn't like to go near this head. He's coming out on his own accord. There we go. Fantastic. Now I just hope he'll just stay for a few minutes so I can photograph. Now I have to get him. I'll pull it straight there. Okay. And just look at the length of that. Now get a picture of that size. Uh-oh, that's the... Coming back. Uh-oh, this is not good. Come on, camera, work now. Oh, man. See how he's looking at me? He's just watching. Uh, okay. Uh, look at that. That's a snake that can eat a man. I don't want to get involved with that part of it. Okay. Look at him, he's really mad now. He's identified me totally as, as the antagonist here. Oh, oh my. Oh, God. Yeah. You don't want a snake like this coiling around you. I can't let go of the head. Oh, he's got me around the waist. This is how a snake constricts. He curls around, he forces your breath out. You try and breathe in, you can't. You need to get out of here. Wow, just look at that threatening gait. That's his way of telling me that he's armed and dangerous. The anacondas, the Indian pythons, and the African pythons, all big powerful snakes, but nothing matches the power of a rific. You put your hand there, you try and squeeze the body, it's total muscle, it's like spring steel, you cannot believe it. And even if he lies dormant in that water, sometimes for weeks at a time, waiting for something to come, something to feed on, he instantly springs to life. I mean, you lie like that for a couple of weeks and you see you can't move afterwards. These guys are muscle like this, muscle bound all the time. He can strike out instantly with all his power. Oh. Ah. Okay, I'm just gonna have to release him and just take pictures as it is. Because you can see, trying to straighten this guy out is next to impossible. He's just too strong. There's nothing he can do against the strength. I think I'm taking too much of a chance here. I can do this without the flash, but not with it. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I think, I think I've been pushing it enough with this guy. I mean, he's really done good. He's done everything in his power to get away from me, and I've just been holding him long enough to get a few decent pictures. So if I can just bring him around, he can come back to the water, and he can go on his way. He's got to be careful he doesn't come for me. Here we are, boy. There's the pool. Off you go. I tell you. Isn't that a snake? Isn't that something? Unbelievable to find a snake like this. And look at this, he actually just wants to get away. So finally he's just decided, let me get out of here, I don't even want to eat this guy. If I could take another picture, it'd be wonderful, but I think he deserves his freedom, he deserves to go. Incredible experience. Look at this snake, 20 foot long, hey, he didn't even eat me. I think it's marvelous. It's just wonderful. It's the most beautiful snake, look at that guy. Unbelievable experience. I'll never forget this. This really is an amazing place. And this had been an expedition full of incredible experiences. I'd set out to find and photograph the giant reticulated python. And I had done it. 
When I think about all that happened, and all that could have happened, I knew that I had been lucky. Yeah. <laughs>